In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There's an old story that some of you may have heard about a passenger on a British Airways flight from Johannesburg who was very upset about her seating companion. This took place years ago when the world was first hearing outside of South Africa the word apartheid. The passenger was a middle-aged white South African woman who was quite disturbed to find herself seated next to a black man on the long flight from Johannesburg to London. She complained bitterly to the flight attendant saying, please find me another seat. I cannot possibly sit next to this gentleman for the next 10 hours. I would be far too uncomfortable. In South Africa, blacks and whites do not socialize. Trying to keep the woman calm, the stewardess replied, the flight is very full today, but I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go and check to see if we have any other seats available in business or first class. A few minutes later, the flight attendant returned with some good news, which she delivered to the lady who looked quite smug. Madam, the stewardess began, unfortunately, as I suspected, economy is full. I've spoken to the other flight attendants and business is full as well. However, we do have one seat in first class. Before the lady had a chance to reply, the stewardess continued, it's most extraordinary to make this kind of upgrade, and I had to get special permission from the captain. But given the circumstances, the captain felt it would be difficult to sit next to someone like this for so long a time. With that, the attendant turned to the black man and said, if you'd like to get your things, sir, I have your seat ready for you in first class. <laughs> At that point, the other passengers began to applaud as the man picked up his belongings and moved to the front of the plane. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, Isaiah says, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God. Make straight the way of the Lord, John says, because things are about to change. Some time ago, I came across an article in the New York Times that began as follows. America is doing well from a global perspective, but there are also signs amid the prosperity that people are asking whether this is all there is. Whether driving cars the size of tanks and parking them in garages the size of gymnasiums is truly the national purpose. The article goes on to talk about the spiritual malaise felt by so many successful people, a sort of unease and longing many people have for something more in their lives, for something deeper. The fulfillment of the old promises of wealth and success and power don't seem to be as satisfying to people as they thought they might be. People crave something new, something different, something to satisfy their deepest desires. I am about to create a new heaven and a new earth, God proclaims in Isaiah, where the wolf and the lamb shall feed together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. God's ways are coming, John the Baptist preaches. God's ways are new, different, and fulfilling. 
Advent proclaims that there is something more out there, something more to come, that the urging felt in the midst of our everyday lives is real. The emptiness, that hollowness in the core we feel even as we accumulate possessions is no accident. William Willimon, the longtime dean of Duke Chapel, said, show me a person who is not waiting for something more to come, who is not yearning, not leaning forward, standing on tiptoe for something better, and I will show you a person who has given up hope, someone who has settled too comfortably in present arrangements, and that's bad. The future belongs to those who wait, for those who know we are meant for something better. You see, the real function of Advent is not the preparation for Christmas. If Christmas only means getting together all the things we need to get together to give and receive gifts, to decorate the house, to throw a party... The real function of Advent is not the preparation for Christmas. If Christmas only means that we get the warm fuzzies over the cute baby Jesus in our crush sets. The real function of Advent is the preparation for the radical entry of God into human history, changing everything for all time the fulfillment of prophecies, and the creation of something new. That's why John the Baptist shows up at this time of the year and says to all of us, repent, turn around, open up, make God the center of your life instead of yourself or your possessions, or your business, or your success, or your power, or your money, or your popularity, or whatever. Advent is the time when we are to prepare ourselves for the coming of the man who will lay claim to our lives. The man who tells us that to love God, we must love our neighbor, even the neighbor we cannot stand, who might be seated next to us on a long flight. Advent is the time when we prepare for the coming of the man who tells us that our material wealth in the long run matters not. In fact, our wealth, my wealth, might be a hindrance to the well-being of my soul. Advent is the time when we prepare for the coming of the man who takes all of our social structures, all of our beliefs about who is valuable in society and who is not, and stands them on their head, proclaiming that the poor are in fact blessed, the meek shall inherit the earth, to be strong we must learn to be weak, to be first we must become last, and to lead you have to serve. In the gift of his son, God offers us something more than the world has to offer. God offers us the only thing that will fill that hole in our souls. God offers us a life that can be deep and wonderful and fulfilling where we can be created anew and live life anew. The question of Advent is, are we ready for this new creation to take place in our lives? Are we ready to let go of the old and embrace the new reality that bursts into the world with the birth of Jesus? Christ is coming. Christmas is almost here. John says, open up to the living God. Make straight a pathway to your heart. 
Amen.